West Hayes homebrew and today I'm going to be doing my second experimental homebrew. Today I'm going to be doing a pineapple wine. Just let me sip of my black currant cider that I made in my first experimental homebrew. Right, what are my ingredients for today? Let me know. So I've got four fresh large pineapples which I'm going to chop up and put into this pan. It's currently boiling, well it's not boiling, it's, it's, it's getting up to the boil. I've got three and a half litres approximately of water in there. So chop these up, pop them in there, boil them for about 20 minutes, 20-25 minutes, we'll see. See how the must's coming along, we'll see. Then I'm going to place that into my uh, 10 litre fermenter with a kilo of sugar well. I'll say again, you know, it'll be whatever I've got knocking about, but it's going to be around about that kind of kilo mark. Leave it in there for a week. Uh, and I'm going to have some citric acid. Uh, what else am I going to have? I'm roughly following the CJJ berry pineapple wine recipe. Uh, citric acid, and I'm going to use some yeast nutrient and a super wine compound to get this finished. Um, I'm not going to add pectolase, I would if I got some. But I haven't got any, so I'm not going to add pectolase. I may add a quarter of a cup of tannin. I'll see how I feel when I get all this chopped and the boil going. So I'll see you in there. All these are in there. Okay, so you can see I've now got a rolling boil. I might even crack that down a little. Good rolling boil going on there. I have only used, as you can see there, look, one left. I've only put three pineapples in because that seemed to me to be more than enough given the liquid levels that I was running at the time. Uh, you can see over there that's just about ready to uh, come over anyway. So I'm going to boil that for 20, probably 25 minutes and then uh, get it into the freshly sterilised fermenting bucket. Uh, this recipe calls for an aerobatic fermentation, so there will be no no uh, airlock fitted to this. So just leave the lid just a smidgen loose, uh, and leave it for a week, and then I shall check the final gravity, not the starting gravity. Right, I'm back. A little change of plan. Like I said, I'm making these on the fly because, well, you know, it's experimental and brewing. That's kind of what you're doing. I said before I'd only used the three pineapples and left the one. I was about ten minutes away from the end of the boil and uh, it had mulched down enough to allow me to get the fourth pineapple in. So that's what I did, chopped it up, wiped it in. Obviously that stopped the boil, sadly. So I've uh, brought it back up to boiling and give it another ten minutes, that's another it's about five minutes in now about boiling. Just weighing my sugar. Might have a little bit more than a kilo, could be a little bit, a little bit of a beast this one. Oh, it looks like a wine. She likes the pineapple. I've done this before. Not exactly the same way as this. It's experimental, isn't it? You know, make it up to go on. Uh, another container in it's got brown sugar in it, obviously. The container weighs about, about 350. Oh, I can't remember exactly. It was, uh, about 1.2 kilos. Take that out, about 900 grams. And that's about 650. So. Okay, the boil's been about 30 minutes in total now, because when I added the uh, fourth pineapple after about 20 minutes boiling, it knocked the boil off almost immediately. About two minutes to get back up, so I left another eight, eight nine minutes. It's been probably 32, 33 minutes in total from start to finish now. Flamo, that's now starting to cool in position. Sanitise me uh, 10 litre container. I've also got various other bits and bobs in my little bucket here, I mean, trial jar, you know, no usual stuff, odds and ends I need doing. Right, goodies that I'm going to be using. Young yeast nutrient, the super wine yeast compound, I'm also for good measure going to wrap a, a tablespoon, sorry, a teaspoon of citric acid in to help with fermentation. Right, so, uh, Let's have a little drink. It's a little Cabernet Sauvignon kit that I did. Uh, that'll be back in the box, and you can see it's a wine bag in the box, five litre 
so much easier than botany. God damn it, let me take it so much easier. This particular batch I did a bit of both. Did uh, three bags that's 15 litres and I've done six bottles and then um, pretty much just went down the drain. It's not too bad actually, considering this was the one that fermented at way too high a temperature, for way too long a time. It took forever to clear. Not too bad actually. Okay, let's get to the good stuff. Get some sugar in the pot. Bad boy way down, shall we? Oh, no, hold on. Ooh, the bad boy. Right, that's 600, 657 grams. And she blows. But you just love all our sound brewers and you empty yeast sachets. Well, they give us some of that, yeah? It's great. Right, now I don't know how much is in here, so I'm going to have to weigh it. Put the sugar in way to get in, work it out. And it's 1178. 778 grams container and sugar. Put the sugar in. Right, so we've got let's have a look. 1178 grams minus the tear weight of uh, nine hundred and thirty five grams was in the container. And we've got about six hundred and thirty two was it thereabouts thereabouts. You're looking at a kilo and a half of sugar in there. This could be a doozy. standard kitchen sieve for this. Worked all right last time. Could end up in a disaster. Let's see what happens. Obviously this must still really warm. It's probably you know 95 degrees but I want it to I want it warm to dissolve the sugar up. So let's have a go. Standard steel pot. Quite warm. Have a little cheat. I'll be back. Told you I'll be back. <sighs> Try and do this without making too much of a mess. As much of that beautiful, sweet, oh, it smells gorgeous. It's now got a lovely Pineapple colour, strangely enough. It's got a very lovely hue to it, like a yellow hue. Uh, in there. Get in there, that's better. It's looking alright now, looking alright now. Oh, an escapee there, a couple of escapees. This is full. I'm going to go and empty this and I'll be back. Okay, so out of four pineapples, I managed to only get two little chunks in the mix. So I'll fish those out. And then we're going to give it a good stir, make sure all that 1.5 kilos of dextrose is going to mix up. Pineapple heaven in a pot. Let me tell you. Right. Now because that's off the charts in terms of temperature, I'm going to go and wrap it in a water bath 
bring the temperature right down. Once that's done, I'll be back. Okay, so the wine must is now in sink cooling down. It's about 38 degrees at the moment, so it's getting a bit warm. What I've done here is I don't normally do this to be fair, and I've never seen anybody else do this in any of the videos. For a yeast nutrient, which normally I've, I've always done it, and everybody else I've seen it just lobs it, lobs it straight in front of the yeast. It does actually say that you're supposed to dissolve it in a cup of water. So, what I've done this time is I have dissolved it in a little bit of the must. And uh, that should be pretty well dissolved by the time I actually throw it in with the yeast and the citric acid. When it's cool enough to go. Okay peeps, it's approximately 40 minutes on from strike out on the old uh, boil and frankly I'm now getting bored. I'm not known for my patience. I've had my old uh, must in the water bath since I turned the heat off. It would appear that three and a half litres of initial water is too much. Because when I topped it up, and to be fair, I have gone a little bit over the five and a half litres that I was aiming at. I'm probably nearly six litres. I'm still struggling. It's been 40 minutes now. Yeah, 40 minutes. And I'm still at 28 degrees. I'm not known for my patience. So I got bored with the old uh, sink cold water method. And I whacked the bastard in the freezer. It will cool down. Oh yes, it will. So hopefully, in about 10 minutes, I'll get it out of the freezer and it will be suitable for pitching the yeast. However, in the meantime, as a tribute to Craig, far away from Craig Tube, how'd that happen? I'm double fisted. Check me out. This has come out of my inaugural corny kick setup. This bad boy's been in the freezer for about the last two hours. And I've got to say, if you ain't got corny kicks, you ain't living, man. Get your ass on me. These bad boys, whilst they're expensive at the moment, are absolutely the dog's gonads. This is the way to serve your beer if you like beer cold and you like it similar to you would get for a very expensive paid for beer from a pub. This is the way forward. It's the future baby, let me tell you. I'll be back when that goddamn must is cold enough. Right. I've now cracked the must out of the freezer. The outside of the container is frozen, so that's always a good sign. Let's have a little stirry worry and let's have a little measure. Measure the temperature. See where we're at. Gotta be getting close now. Surely to God. Drop that back in the old uh, star sign solution. Okay, so we're at 24 degrees now. <laughs> I'm happy to be in shit with that. I'm going to whap in my uh, yeast nutrient that I put in some must. In she blows. And stir that up. Also going to add, what does it say? A rounded teaspoon of the citric acid. I'll give that a little stir. Did I mention that this uh, holiday cooking is quite good off the old film, you see? Not bad. It's disappearing fat, let me tell you. To be fair, I'm fat enough already, I really should not drink one too much. Get here off and all down, let me tell you. Right, before we pitch the bad boy yeast, we'll take a little sample and see what we're expecting in terms of uh, ABV for this bad boy. Oh, no, I appreciate that 24 degrees is perhaps still a little bit over the 20 degrees that you would normally measure your uh, SGR. Frankly. <laughs> I'm bored of waiting. And 
yes, it might be a little uh, need a minor adjustment. Mm. That fuss, like the actual ABV needs to be fixed. As long as it tastes good, we're good. Right, we'll have a look at that in a minute. Get some yeast in the bad boy. Uh, actually, that's pretty much bang on five and a half litres. Five litres, pretty much bang on. One heaped. It's not quite a heap. Put that in there. A little bit extra. Oh look. Put them back in the star sand. Right. Now. I'm going to give this a little stir. I don't normally, but given that it's not under airlock, I know there's. You know, several schools have thought about this, you know, do you leave it on top, does that start the game going? I don't think anybody really knows, we're just kind of guessing, ain't we, sir? In this particular instance, because I'm not on rare, like, and I'm not in the big batch, I've stirred it up. Double don't you out the lid. On. Leave it cranked just a smidgen. We're at uh, 24 degrees. I'll tell you all day long. Whack this over here in the brew laundry, and that's going to be there for a week. Right. Let's have a look what the uh, starting gravity was. Oh my God. you can see from how high the hydrometer is sitting in the trial jar that's pretty tasty to be fair give it a little spin and we're looking at we're looking at 1.13 which assuming we get down to one to be fair with the super one yeast compound yeah we're going to be far off of that i'm guessing that's going to be pretty, pretty kicky bollocks in. Let me just have a look. I will consult the older computer oracle and I will work it out for you. 1.13. Calculator not playing, but it's going to be strong. I'm guessing that's probably, the 1080 is about 12% in it, so that's probably going to be somewhere pushing, it's going to be pushing 16% I would imagine. I think it's actually going to give you I don't need a scientific calculator. I'm not a fucking scientist. What's wrong with these people? I don't know. My brain's not working properly. It's going to be. I'll work it out and I'll come back to you later. But let me tell you, that's going to be strong. Just open up fry the yeast because it's not too strong. I'm back. I've got my head on now. Yeah, it's looking like it's going to be about 70 and a half percent. Right, today is now day three. Let's have a look. Let's see how she's going. Look at that. Look at that lovely Krausen ring. Still fermenting, only you can hear that. It smells amazing, to be fair. Give it another few days, and then I might do a the gravity reading and see how far we are away from uh, the magical final figure. But, uh, I'll come back to you when I do that. Right, today is day six, six or seven I forget to be fair. Um, I did give this a little test yesterday and it was still about the 1050 mark. I think I may have killed the yeast with the 17.5% to ABV for the sugar so I'm going to do another test now and see if it's changed any and uh, if it hasn't then I'll have to re some more yeast and hope it uh, kicks off again still sat quite nicely at uh, 22 degrees so uh, let's do a little hydrometer okay so about 24 hours ago I did a hydrometer reading and it was 
just a smidgen over 1050. If that ever focuses. You'll see, or you won't, whichever. No, apparently not. Anyway, that's sitting at 1042, so it's gone down 8 points in 24 hours, and it's still obviously fermenting. So I'm going to leave that and uh, let it ferment out. Well, welcome back. And this, as you can see there, is the finished pineapple wine. However, there is a bit of a story to go with this. Sadly, this one is not the one you saw me making earlier in this video. Just pull this and then I'll explain what's going on. Well, the story goes like this. I clearly got a little bit hasty with the dextrose in the last video. And unfortunately, the yeast didn't ferment it down. It got down as far as about 10.30. Uh, I re-agitated the yeast. It took about 10 days. I re-agitated the yeast. Didn't make any difference. I was testing it every other day. Nothing. re some more yeast nutrient. re some more uh, super young super one yeast compound. Just didn't have it. And it was sat in the bucket for about probably three weeks. And I obviously picked something up in the air because it started to go off. So sadly that one in the bin. However, I have since done two more batches in exactly the same way. But I didn't use quite as much sugar. I only used a kilo in both of those and they come out about 10%. I bottled the last batch. The batch before that I gave to a friend. But this, you've just seen me pour out the bottle. See if you can see how clear that is. That's pretty clear. Look, there you go. That's pretty clear. Got a beautiful nose on it. So now I'm not a big white. Personally, I'm not a big white wine fan. Look, you see that? Uh, I'll make this for my wife. It's quite drinkable. Don't get me wrong, but I'm a red man. Um, it's quite smooth. Definitely getting better. Aging in the bottles. It's uh, it's quite smooth. It's crystal clear. It's got a beautiful. It's not. It's not massively pineapple, strangely, but it's definitely different to like a white grape that you would get from a normal white wine smell. There's a little bit of chill heads in there because it's, but, but you know, you see, I'll show on the video, but believe me, to me, without the camera, that is crystal clear. No floaty bits, very nice, and as I say, a kilo of sugar brings this out to around the 10% mark, 9.8-10%, so it's... It's quite drinkable, it's not going to blow your brains out, not like my 17% disaster that happened first up. But I would definitely say go go with this. Um, it's very easy to make, doesn't take a lot of time, and it turns out really nice. I'm sure the book, CJJ Berry's wine book, says it's a sweet wine, I wouldn't say it's sweet. I would say it's medium, medium to medium sweet is probably about right. My wife doesn't like dry wines. I suppose I could back sweeten this, but she likes it as it is. In fact, now she likes it as it is, she's quite possessive over this. I uh, cracked a bottle out Christmas Day, at the in-laws round and my, and my parents round. Cracked a bottle this open because my mom told my mum about it, and uh, she was quite, uh, that's my wine, what are you doing? Don't be giving it away, that's mine. But uh, she's still got four bottles to go, and since she's on a diet, she ain't going to drink it now, so... So uh, look forward to the next uh, experimental homebrewing video. But I can definitely say I will be doing this again. Don't need to do it for a while because I've got four bottles to go at. But uh, I will be doing it again in another couple of months. Hopefully the pineapples will be more freely available as we get in out of the winter months. And uh, I shall definitely be uh, stockpiling this. I need to buy me some more bottles to keep on top of it. But uh, future experimental homebrewing videos. What have I got lined up? Right, well, I've got... A cherry, a hard cherry cider that I'm going to try. Very, uh, very similar recipe to the hard apple ciders, but uh, that's coming up shortly. Keep your eyes peeled. Likey, any comments? Let me know. And uh, thank you very much for watching.